I'm one of your hosts, Myra King, and to my left, I have Desi Des. It's your boy Dave, and we have some special guests in the building from us, with us. Yeah, all the way from Florida, correct? Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Go ahead, introduce you all. You introduce yourself. Cool. So, my name's Kip. I'm Angelique. And nice. we're, yeah, and we have a business called Smarter by Nature. All and, right. Uh, yeah, we're based out in Tallahassee, Florida. Mm. Okay. Okay. How, so, how did the whole Smarter by Nature start? Yeah. Uh, Smarter by Nature started uh, because we used to hang out after we graduated from college. We used to hang out at gardens and like that's how we spent our time. So, you know, a lot of people go to the movies, to the club. We used to go to the garden and um, just plant for fun, uh, learning. It was a cool time to spend with each other. But we spent so much time doing it that we're like, man, time is money and we're getting older. So we need to be able to um, merge that somehow with sustainability. And in the 21st century, sustainability is largely economic. So we said, let's put an economic tie to our hobby and our passion and see if that can sustain us. Wow. That's dope. You don't hear too many stories like that, at least not promoted or broadcast. Not at all. Um, it's one of you all, what, one of you all went to school and got a sociology degree. Yeah, that was me. It was you. What what made you what what made you leave that alone and go into and go into uh farming agriculture or well um for for me sociology uh really I, I kinda picked it based on like my own lack of understanding and it sounded like I would be able to learn about culture but instead I learned about social inequality, which is super good. So I, I, I ended up taking the value that I gained per, like for myself outside of school. And um, I didn't, I never intended on being like a social worker or something like that. And, but that communal engagement aspect is tied directly to our business. So it, right now with farming, it's something where I could be directly hands-on with the process versus like getting hired by somebody to go here, there, there. Um, I get to like do the work myself and engage with people um, and facilitate healing experiences with people. How did you get the land? Um, we don't have the land right now. It's not ours, but we're using the land. So okay. it's a relationship that we have with the other in the community, Dr. Ford, Dr. Carolyn Ford. Um, pretty much we were doing a presentation at a class at FAMU about our business and what we do. She happened to be there and um, we connected. She had a, a five acres, no, seven acres. That's in Quincy, Florida, that, which is 30 minutes from where we are. Nobody's been using it for the past 20 years. So she said, if y'all want to drive out there, uh, y'all can, can have at it. So we took, up, took her up on that offer. Mm. Now, did you know, have to know, like with farming, uh, I know it takes a lot of maintenance, per se. Like, uh, yeah. How, how did you how did you get the start into like um, what are we going to plant first or did you, did you have yeah, to learn yeah. about agriculture did you have to learn about the soil first or how was that yeah. whole process man it's all of that and as you get bigger in terms of the space that you deal with there's new dynamics that you consistently have to address but uh, we study a practice called permaculture which is creating permanent agriculture systems it's kind of a new thing. It was made like in the 80s, but really it's using indigenous land management practices, combining them together and knowing what principles uh, determine those practices and carrying those wherever you go. So once you learn permaculture, you could take any piece of land, no matter what size, and you'll be able to apply those principles to it and adapt. So we were, when she brought us with this space, which is the biggest we've ever dealt with, all we did was, um, they say go from pattern to details. So instead of getting lost in the details, like, oh, where's the chicken pen going to go? Whatever. We, we looked at the patterns, like, all right, what's north, east, south, and west? That's where our sun is going to be coming from. So we're going to plant our plants on this side. So we looked at the overall patterns of the space, and then and we, and we still develop in the details right now. 
Mm. Is there any certifications or anything like that that comes with farming or anything like that that people should know about? Yeah, uh, there's a lot of stuff out there and it's going to be based on your interests. Farming is so unique because it's old and new. There's new things that are being done today, like hydroponics, aquaponics, and then there's old things that are being done, um, like monocrop, unfortunately. But the point is, is that your certification or your degree, wherever you get, it depends on what avenue. So for us, we are certified permaculture designers. What okay. that means is that, yeah, we went to a teacher, um, we took her course, uh, we ended up taking her course like almost like a year um it was roughly around nine months and we were going like every week uh meeting other people uh who had projects going on that's who got our certification from um and then angelique she studied environmental science uh so right. so we bring all of, all of that stuff uh together so question for the lady how is it because i know with Kip, with you being a man, obviously it seems like farming is a male's type of situation, but with you being a woman in this type of situation, what is the difference, I should say, in the farming techniques? I'm not going to say the techniques. I'm pretty sure they're still the same, but what is the difference in between a woman wanting to be a farmer besides obviously a man normally just doing such a thing? Because it seems like that's something a lot of women haven't gotten into, not saying they can't. It's just something they don't know about. So what advice can you give to the ladies out here who need to know this thing? Because I feel like we all need to know some form of fashion of farming. Like we have to survive out here. Right. Well, I think that anybody could get into it really you have to listen to your body because when you if you're not used to being in the sun and like physically working uh for a long period of time you need to like pace yourself but i actually think like the women who do come to our farm they're like very thorough they want to make sure like everything like are we done are we finished like is do we need to get anything else done like so i think any woman can do it and it's about like listening to your body and also having a plan uh, we work together a lot so we always uh, communicate with what's our plan. Maybe sometimes I don't want to like grub hoe or scythe or something. Like we'll split up the tasks. So it's always like great to work in pairs or like the more people you work with, the easier the job could be. Yeah. Kip, I got okay. one more for you real fast. You said the um the old techniques and the newer techniques. Now, you said the newer techniques being hydroponics and stuff like that. You said the older techniques being micro or something like that, but you said it's unfortunate. Why do you think that's unfortunate that they use the older techniques? Yeah, so it's called monoculture. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's like the thing that's destroying agriculture today. Mm -hmm. um, part of this is like subjective, like just me, just my personal opinion. And a lot of this is facts, factual based on the decimation of farmland across America. But um, it's unfortunate because those practices are taking us backwards. They're costing us a lot of money as farmers, as a country. They're um, contributing to food shortages. They're contributing to water mismanagement of water practices. So that affects us even on a civilian level when it comes to how much water we're allowed to use during the summertime. That's largely affected by agriculture in your region, how much water they use. And pretty much we got to proportion it with them. But if they're not using proper management practices to retain the moisture in their space, then they're needlessly using water. So it's, it's just, um, that's just one example. Uh, you got, uh, when you do monoculture, the land is so big that you need large machines in order to maintain it. So you can't always use your mind and say, this plant needs this, this plant needs that. When you have large machines, pretty much you have to do gloss over problem solutions. So like if there's a bug situation, spray all this poison all over it. Or if there's a fertilization, spray all of this over it. And sometimes that's too much on the soil. Then you have water runoff and then you have algae blooms and red tides. I don't know if y'all heard of the red tides, um, but it's yeah, pretty much the term. It, it, it's the Gulf of Mexico. Y'all should look it up. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a pandemic going on, but it's okay. in the Gulf of Mexico right now. And what happens is um, there's algae blooms that suffocate the life in the ocean. So people get sick and they've been getting sick in real life. You go to the beach and you think it's all cool. And they say, you know, you got bacterial infections all over your body. 
from um, the anaerobic water. So algae blooms, red tide is a big thing happening right now. And these are situations where unless you're involved in it, you won't know because they don't t share this with us on, 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 on TV a lot, you know, but um, monoculture contributes to these problems. Do you all test, test the product? Like how does, um, you know, like if you go to a store, you hear like a recall situations, how does that come about? Like, how do you know when you have to recall something? Right, so that's on the monoculture large scale. And what happens is what recalls is largely deal with, which is going to get crazy, but it's largely dealing with um, salmonella and E. coli. And these are bacteria that are often in like the feces of animals. So what that means is that the farms that use uh, what it was an onion recall, last year was a lettuce. That means somehow their practices are being interwoven with animal practices like somehow there uh, there's animal parts going on around there and that's the murky that's the murky area and that's where it's hard to um because if they have a cow farm right next to you and then you got this farm nobody's there to say man wait that 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 might be too much going on so oftentimes for profit people bypass um these observations and next thing you know you got breakouts on the small scale with us if we don't have animals so our customers don't have to worry about fecal matter being in their food. That's number one. Mm -hmm. um, number two is that because it's because we manage how much we can manage, we're able to observe all of our vegetables one by one, like a like a private school, and we be we're able to screen our vegetables before they get to your plate. So we don't just have a whole field. You know, we don't just take some some large machines, cut whatever, wash it, and sell it to you. We mm -hmm. took each one, and we made sure that yeah, this one good to go, this one not good to go. Mm, that's wow, what's up. that's what's how, up. How can someone purchase this? So for us, we sell right now locally. What that means, all right. So I got two answers. One is that from us personally, we sell locally. So we sell to our. Tallahassee, North Florida region. If you're in that area, if you ever come through, hit us up and we got you. In terms of local food for you all personally, wherever y'all live, where y'all live, by the way, St. Louis. We are in St. Louis. Oh, yeah. oh awesome. Okay. So wherever you live, y'all should be looking for your farmer's market. And like, mm -hmm. again, there, there, there has to be at least one. And if not, then y'all need to maybe take some action. Um, this is like That's a what call farmers out. do. They, they, they give it to farmer's markets. They take it to farmer's market. So, so how do you get the contracts going? Like, how does that work? Can anybody so, take it to the farmer's market? Hell no. So, nah, so it te technically, yeah, it depends. So you have two ways. We sell our own produce. So you have farmers that sell their own produce, and then you got broker farmers that purchase a large amount of stuff from uh, the actual grower, and then they take it to the farmer's market and sell it as themselves. That's a whole nother process that we're not involved in. Mm. But in terms of you guys, if y'all wanted to, or whoever is listening, you can easily grow some food, some flowers, and you can easily uh, take it to the market. It's usually some type of application, and it's usually some type of fee that you have to pay. It might be monthly or yearly, but it's not enough to break your pockets. And then you have the opportunity to test test it out. Do you eat? Like, or, uh, like what's your eating habits? We mainly eat like a plant-based diet, okay. so a lot of vegetables and uh, gourmet mushrooms. Mm -hmm. right. Are there any specific herbs we need to be on the lookout for in times like these? Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of us are eating unhealthy, brother. We need That's to hear fact. something, brother and sister. We yeah. need to hear yeah. something. Help us, out. Help us out. I mean, like I said, we in St. Louis, you know. You know. Thanks. In our so, community, eating home healthy. Home of the sodas and Roman do, noodles. Yeah. Right, right, right. So number one. I would suggest everybody look up shiitake mushrooms um, okay. or just eat, eat eat more mushrooms outside of, uh, what is it? Port Portobello. Yeah, eat more mushrooms outside of Portobello. And oh. like, yeah, man, because I, I, I don't have, have no idea. So I'm about to actually research St. Louis after this and see what is there. But um, well, send it to us too. Send it back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any, any, if y'all have a grocery store, I don't know if there's different like tiers of grocery stores, like a supermarket or like a new leaf, I don't know what y'all got, mm -hmm. but um, alternative mushrooms, mushrooms are a thing, they are antiviral, antibacterial, so mm -hmm. y'all want to fortify your immune system right now, that's one way, and it's like a meat substitute, or meat accompanying, accompanying food that you can eat, and just eat more greens, where, where, wherever it is, 
um, I could tell y'all a, bu a bunch of stuff, but like, it's either y'all gonna be finding somebody who grows it directly from y'all, or y'all gonna order it offline. One thing is Moringa powder. That's probably the only thing I'm gonna say because it's the most uh, bomb bomb pack. But if y'all look up Moringa powder, that that's a good one. Moringa, uh, hey, you powder. saving lives, man. There's people that's gonna listen to this and look that stuff up. I'm looking it up right now. I'm gonna look it up, but I know it's a whole lot of more people that need yeah. to hear this. Yeah. That's, that's really um, can't uh, you know afford nothing really that good to eat so therefore they need to try to get the moringa powder they need to try to find right. some mushrooms if you can't eat nothing but you know not chips and soda you know listen to them yeah yeah, yeah. it's yeah. just adding it to your food so whatever you eat you can even say i mean this is like to me the worst scenario but say you get in say you eat off of mcdonald's every day only you freaking get some some of them shiitake mushrooms or you throw them in that sandwich right. and, and you eat it like that or get it however you can but yeah. incorporate these they say pay for your health now or pay for the doctor later so that's mm. correct that is a fact I, I hear um well to me i feel like um uh, well i saw i saw farm and get like a more popular when um queen sugar came out and uh right. I, and I, I love that show, by the way. I love that show, and I love how they really put the aspect on, like, farming, because we had never been introduced to that within our culture, like, our movies or television, so I thought that was dope. But um, also, like, uh, going, like, watching that and then hearing about show, social injustices that goes on within farming itself, like, that's a whole nother well, ball was, game. Was one farmer was uh, served bad seed. Yeah, yeah like, yeah. like that stuff happens. How... Um, I'm it's not saying you all directly have dealt with that, but have you all heard stories and, and what is that like? And also I hear yeah. um, the, uh, one of the biggest farmers market, what conventions or some type of uh, event out in DC, um, they were not really accepting a lot of uh, black applicants, like a lot of their vendors, it was like under 1%. And they said that was one of the biggest, like they're trying to, uh, a lot of black farmers are trying to like uh, overthrow that, like uh, find a way where they can uh, break the barrier down Right. Needs to be more diverse. Like, uh, I guess basically, long story short, what are some of the social injustices that goes with farming, mm. and how and how can that be dealt with? Yeah. So yeah. it's it's all that, it's all that that y'all name. Uh, the social injustices include like late loans, so that a person isn't able to capitalize on the growing season, which puts mm -hmm. them behind. Yeah. Uh, bad seeds. Um, it's, it has a lot to do with communication or, or products or, or lack of access into events that can help farmers out. The answer is, to me, is uh, like economic solidarity. Like at the end of the day, we should be doing our own thing, finding out what we need to do and, and like serving our people. I ain't gonna lie, as farmers, we serve everybody. Uh, we, serve, we serve everybody in need. But in terms of looking at black farmers and like looking at our community, as a target, you know, coming from within and going out, we yeah. need to be able to take care of ourselves. So it, it should be nothing. The new age right now, 21st century, because we're deep into social media too, but the new age is uh, deconstruct and reconstruct. So we need to be looking at these constructs and we need to be breaking them down and saying, all right, ideally I would like to go here. They not, they haven't for the last 10 years providing us proper access. All right, that means we need to make one of these. Yeah. Or, these are new areas that means that that can be flourished and nourished yeah. um or or all right man this guy done been messing me up on my seed supply for how long now that means that there's a market for seed supply so it's about flipping the these challenges and and creating new opportunities out of them which is what we're good at doing so that that's what we have to do i got a question Support when i heard other. florida i heard hurricane season and all of that what are the yeah. hardships of dealing with floods and stuff like that? And I mean, um, what is it? I mean, I, forget, I was going to say insect inspection, I mean, infections, but y'all probably got animal infections, like alligators yeah, and, yeah. Tomatoes and whatnot, you know, <laughs> lizards all in the onion garden, like all that. How <laughs> <laughs> do you deal yeah, with that type of situation? Um, let's um, start with the floods specifically, though. How do you deal with your crops if they're flooded during a hurricane season and stuff like that? So how we deal with floods and like retaining water in the soil is really with carbon mm -hmm. and we get different types of carbon. It could be cardboard, wood chips, hay, straw, and we just pack it on top of our soil. And what that does is when it rains, it absorbs it. So for every one inch of water, 
three inches are retained in that soil. For every three inches of water, one, yeah. one inch is retained. So three inches of water um, goes down into our water, and I mean, going down into our ground, and the straw retains one, one inch of uh, moisture. What happens with us is we get frequent heavy rain, but we also get hot blazing sun. So it's like extreme hot, extreme hot. So carbon helps mediate that. And that's like one of our principles is putting carbon in our space. Um, yeah. So talk Man, to you me. guys are legendary. Yeah, no doubt about that. <laughs> <it. laughs> yeah. 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 No oh, doubt yeah. about that. Um, talk to me about because I'm I'm gonna I am not gonna lie to y'all. I'm not eating healthy right now. I'm trying to get off the meat. Okay. Now I didn't left the pork alone as best as I could. And it's rough for me to get rid of bacon, but I'm trying. I'm trying. I hear you, man. I'm trying. Pray the Lord every day that I can get rid of my diet. <laughs> Now, how do I, because I've seen this thing and I'm, I'm tired of people talking about it because I can't never really talk to the proper people about it. But now that I've got some farmers in here, I want to ask, what does a vegan Thanksgiving look like? Oh. <laughs> have you ever seen that? Can you talk to me about that? Wow. Yeah, we actually have a video on our YouTube channel. We did a skit called uh, Vegan Thanksgiving where we okay. talked about what does that look like. But um, for us, it's just a bunch of love in the kitchen. We, we throw down just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny because oftentimes, if you just take out the meat component, you're automatic vegan. And we don't even, I mean, we like plant-based because it's about being flexible. Um, but for us, we like to eat a lot of beans. There's many types of beans out there. It ain't just black beans all day. But we, we, do, we do different types of beans. We do mushrooms and like different ways that we cook the mushrooms. Um, uh, tons of veggies. We like doing roasted veggies. So we like doing roasted sweet potatoes, roasted Brussels sprouts. Um, of course, different varieties of greens. Um, I love uh, rice. We, we love different grains, quinoa and stuff like that. Okay. We, we're not too keen on the tofu. But uh, mm, why not? Vegan mac. And vegan mac. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with the tofu? Uh, the tofu is um, like 90% of it in today's world is GMO, so it's genetically modified. And then also on a personal note, it boosts estrogen levels in people. Um, so, yeah, which can, have, have, which is a hormone. Hey, so the are, you, are you close to the, like the inner, like when you go to the store, do you go to the inner city or are you close to a big city? Uh, we're not in a big city. We're it's in a, the capital. It's the capital of Florida, yeah. but it's not. Is it not a big city? It's, it's like a college town. Mm -hmm. But it got. We have, we have public. Okay, so you ain't in the middle of nowhere. Nah, we ain't in the middle okay. of nowhere. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, I saw uh, where you all are gearing up for a uh, fall season, and yeah. I'm not sure how the weather is in the uh, well fall and you you all's uh, winters. But how is the um, farming maintenance different from uh season to season and is there a special uh crop that you all focus on like in those seasons as well yeah so around september it starts to get cooler out here so that's when we're growing collard greens turnips mustards uh spinach like carrots onions brussels sprouts so that's when our cool season crops come in and Really, the difference in maintenance is like in the summer is heavy rain, and there are um, the weeds grow less. So it's mainly us planting and harvesting for the fall and the winter. Yeah. Okay. So are you guys like historians as well, or what? Nah. No, <laughs> we do a lot of research though. <laughs> well, this sounds like y'all know a lot, okay? Yeah, a lot. I want to know yeah. what y'all up there talking about. Like, what's what's going on out here? Man, what's we up? be yeah. All we all we do is research though. Like, uh, all, all we do is 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 research, and, and it's fun. We love doing this. I don't know why, but we love it. And there's so much. There's so much to it, and it's on a personal note too. Like, you know, taking care of yourself. How you gonna take care of your family? How would you take care of your, your friend? It, 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 it scales, let alone how would you operate a business in, under agriculture lens? It, it's, so, it's so deep. Some people only focus on hair products. Some people grow crops to turn into hair gels 
and they focus on health and wellness, like different people do different things. Some people say, all right, we're going to take this crop, we're going to dry it out, and we're going to turn it into incense. Like this. some people say we're going to make soaps. So it's so much stuff, not even just on the food. Agriculture is how you make your clothes on your body. Somebody, some people say we're going to make, we're going to sell textiles and we're going to sell fine linen. You know, different people do different things. So since it's so open, it's really at the core of everything. It gives us a lot to chew on. And we in the information age today, so we are utilizing that tool. Also, nature is like so inspiring to be around because mm -hmm. when you are, it could be a container, uh, a small pot, or it could be a backyard, it could be an acre. But like when you're in nature, when you're dealing with plants, you get to see like the growth process and the life cycle of things. So it yeah. is humbling and it is like motivating to keep growing. Because every day you're growing, no matter if you're watching it or not. That's right. it. Yeah. That's it. To see a plant grow is to know you growing as well. That's crazy. Nice. Yeah. Do you do you all uh, plan to like a? Wh where do you all see your you you're all? <clears throat> where do you all see, um, smart nature, uh, going? And uh, do you plan to own your own land someday? So, um, smarter by nature, we definitely. I'm sorry, smarter by nature. I'm sorry. We we definitely uh plan on owning our own land. Uh, that's like right around the corner, and um. We would like to create a nursery. Uh, we want to cook food for people. We want to provide education space so that people can come and learn, live on our streets. Oh, my God. Our yes, sir, brother. Yeah, man. Yes, sir. You know how many people you can teach on some yeah, land? Definitely. All you need is a couple of teachers, one teacher, or one or two teachers, and some speakers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why haven't nobody did this before, bro? <laughs> All these people with billions, millions yeah. and billions of dollars, all these brothers, so-called brothers, we don't have no land where we teach I mean, thousands of people. I, I just feel like some people don't even, it's not even that they don't think about it, just don't cross their mind. What is college about. really? It's just somebody teaching in front of a class. Why yeah. can't you teach these people outside? You know what? We don't have enough money to build a college, but you know what? We can get a lot of seats. Yeah. Put some speakers around here and have a tent. You ain't doing that. Yeah. You're going to sleep and waking up anyway. These people out here with yeah. five dollars in their pocket. You don't That's think true. if LeBron say, hey, we all, I bought 2,000 acres worth what? of land, come down here and, and you know, we're going to teach you up, up and send you out. What? You know. For real. So I do got a question for y'all. Like I said, with the current climate that we're in with the whole COVID-19 situation, is there anything that we should know as far as our immune systems that we should be looking at, specific foods or herbs or anything, minerals or anything like that that we need to be aware of outside of the shiitake mushrooms because i'm gonna go ahead and dig that <laughs> all right and crack, so, no doubt so i'm gonna let angelique say hers but for me the name of the game is oxidative stress and like that's at the core of diseases um and cancer in our bodies and we want to reduce that by taking in antioxidants antioxidants so um antioxidants are oftentimes dark food and th this is the stuff you can't find in the stores we're gonna get into the deep stuff that you can find on doctors every website but the stuff that you can find in your stores is the dark color foods um the beets uh the pomegranate pomegranate the berries beets and berries yeah. get some beets and berries and just eat more steamed can food can good beets i'm sorry can good beets uh, I was staying away from the canned good beets. Right. Hey, that's all you got, dude. No, no, because a lot of people say like canned good like fruits or vegetables are not really good for you. Yeah, I mean the fresher the better, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, everything, the enzymes, all all of it. See, food food is a structure. So when you're putting this stuff into our bodies, you're putting in like a a, a compound structure that has a lot going on inside of it. Um, and you put that in, into your body, and your body's taking that in. So you want to put live foods into your body so mm. that you can introduce that community every it's all about your uh your gut health that's like the name of the game when it comes to fighting diseases um they say that uh 80 of the serotonin in our body which they thought came from the brain comes from our gut so that there's a direct link between our gut and our mental health so when we, when we talk about fighting diseases fighting cancer fighting all of that stuff i'm no doctor but when we talk about preventative measures to ensure our health, you want to make sure you're putting the proper things into your gut. And so aside of the superfoods, it's just eating whole foods. And I, like I said, it's steaming things more instead of using so much oil. 
So what about steam. taking vitamins from the store? Men's and women's one a day. Personally, we don't like the vitamins. Um, with all vitamins, I, I got a homegirl who's a pharmacist, but the, the whole point is that with every with every medicine, there's some type of counterbalance to it because it's concentrated. It's a concentrated mineral. So you it's not structured and you haven't allowed your body to fully process and break that down. And when you put those concentrated minerals in your body, sometimes they put too much stress on your liver, on your kidneys, on the things of our body that's supposed to process. Um, wow. So you want to use whole foods. Whole, whole foods is the way to go. Um, if you're eating a bad diet, just start now. It's not like you eat a whole foods today is going to change you tomorrow, but mm -hmm. it's going to change you in 21 days. And, and, it, and it's about like cleansing out our bodies so that you can move forward. And then once you get out of the hole of our bad habits, that's when the discipline starts and the health and wellness really starts. Until then, you're really watching your body change from where you're at now to where you should be or to where you're headed. And then it's about creating that pattern after that. So it's two phases. I think I cut you off when uh, David asked your question. I did cut you off. You were finishing your uh, fruits, I mean, your fruits and vegetables or something oh, yeah, that we can yeah. be looking forward to. Right, right, right. So the dark color foods, the leafy greens, collards are super food. Um, one recipe that we like to do for some raw greens, and this is like raw kale and collards. Kale and collards is what y'all going to get. But pretty much what you do is you take coconut oil or olive oil, and then you and you rub, you, you massage the greens, and that's going to make the, that's going to break it down and make it, it uh, soft as if you cooked it already. And then you put salt and pepper and cayenne pepper on that, and you can eat that raw. So that's collard greens and kale that you can eat raw, and you'll be getting all of those antioxidants, all that chlorophyll, all of those benefits. It won't be washed out into the water, because when you cook greens, all the minerals goes into the water. So try to eat as much raw foods as you can. To be and clear, he's saving clean. lives out here. Yeah, to he be is saving lives. Yeah, to be clear, <laughs> you said clean the greens, massage right. it with coconut or olive oil, and then I yeah. can eat. How do you yeah. clean the greens? You I'm hold you to that. Rinse them off. Right. Right. What what water. Just no, run. Of <laughs> yeah, you just rinse them off in water. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you gotta ask. Did you see, we gotta ask everything. There's that's for everything. With somebody listen, watching, what you got to go for? Right. That's true, though. I'm not gonna lie to you. Now, I'm not forming on no scale of it's nowhere boring. near y'all. And then okay, she can finish hers. Yeah. I got two plants. I got like two or three plants in the backyard. How do I that's keep these rabbits out of my cabin? Uh, oh, let, let her finish her best fruits and vegetables. Yeah, give me they your best yeah. fruits and vegetables. Yeah. So to help with like just easy an easy way to incorporate minerals is by drinking tea like you can go into the any spice section of your store and i we like to make like just a concoction of things so we'll put some oregano leaves some thyme turmeric ginger fennel fennel, um, cardamom, allspice, cloves. And we can send y'all a list of this stuff too. And y'all can yeah, we'll appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. We'll yes, appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> but, but, yeah, yeah, man. Y'all can send me a menu of stuff to get to. <laughs> drink, 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 drinking teas and just putting really all the food is all the super what food. Kind all, of all, all of the live food. The, those mixed teas that we was talking about, like oh, putting yeah. it in there. Gin, uh, turmeric and black pepper is good. For anti-inflammation, would you recommend about, drinking a tea raw or no no sugar or no nothing in it? We put we like honey, yeah, oh. and yeah, honey. Like honey, yeah, okay. honey and lemon. Honey is structured sugar. We don't like to put uh, concentrated white sugar. So. Yeah, but honey and lemon, okay. Yeah, I, am, I I love the honey trick. They taught me that about five years ago. I was like, I'll see you again, sugar. <laughs> 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 Um, I, uh, like I said, I do want to figure out how I keep these rabbits off my cabbage. I mean, in my lettuce and whatnot. Also, um, before we continue along with the tea, is there any sort of concoction that I can get together to keep myself woke at eight o'clock in the morning hmm. instead of me going to go get an energy drink or something like that? Yeah. Is there anything that you can help to give me an extra boost a throughout Red my Bull. day? Because other than that, yeah, it's going to be a monster of Red Bull throughout the day. And I'm tired. I, I say. I know my body like, get it, get this man. Really like fruits. Gotcha. Uh, fruits have a lot of sugar, and one of my one of my favorite snacks right now are frozen grapes. And <laughs> frozen grapes. I've been yes. this week. I'm, I appreciate it. Yes. Yeah. And you freeze the grapes yourself? 
Yeah, mm-hmm. it's fine. You you get you get some some grapes, put them in the bowl, put them in the freezer overnight, and and it's like it's like a, it's like little mini popsicles. They're 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 really good and refreshing. What's more healthier, the the green or the the red grapes? Mm, I would say the red. Red. Okay. Yeah, more more more. You want those minerals, mm-hmm. those antioxidants. Mm, that's, okay. that's what's up. Now, I don't know if y'all know wine drinkers or nothing like that, but that's definitely how they get ice wine. They take the ice wine, pick the grapes, and early in the morning because that's what the coldest point of the day. Oh, okay. so, you learn something. Yeah. something. What y'all talking about freezing grapes? It makes <laughs> absolutely sense. Um, that's what's up. Go ahead, Mari. What you have for him? My bad. I thought. Oh, uh, good. Uh, what kind of music do you guys listen to? That's a good question. Right. You we listen to the field. Yeah. <laughs> we, we like a lot of um we'll listen to like um like old school music, um uh, Ivy Brothers, Earth Wind and Fire and stuff. But okay. I, I, I like um I, I really like Thundercat, um, which is a bass guitarist. Uh, he's really good. Um Erica Badu. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we like smooth stuff, we like groovy things. Um and we'll listen to some African music. We like Afrobeat. We, we yeah. like just different vibes. Mm-hmm. That's what's up, man. What advice will you give to someone that's just that wants to start off uh, growing and uh, getting into it uh, slowly? Yeah, I got, yeah, I got three carrots right now, but I'm trying to expand. What what advice? Right. Right? What advice? Is, yeah, and, and what would you recommend them to grow starting off that would kind of be. You know, so, I don't want to say easy maintenance, but you know, yeah, just something. And tell them it's not for some people; it's for everybody. If you want to eat, if you want to live, right? It's right, for everybody. Right, right. So, man, what's your mindset? So, so basically, I would say make a plan, and what that means is learn first, because if you don't have the money to just get something like that, and every time you spend money in, in life, it's oftentimes a risk. So, in order to like minimize that risk into when you purchase in land you want to develop your time you want to develop your knowledge asset because that that's an asset that we can all develop now without money so that's what causes us to learn so much is that we don't we can't we can't afford to mess up 20 grand or however much money it's cost to buy land so develop your mind up and just learn about plants spend an hour a day spend 30 minutes a day sit down in front of youtube and learn something new every day about plants like teach yourself like yo how do plants eat? How much water to feed? Blah, 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 blah. Um, lettuce is probably the easiest thing to grow. Or forget that. Herbs is the easiest yeah. thing to grow, like basil, oregano. Y'all can forget that. Start with basil, oregano. Yeah. That, that, that's um, them, them two plants right there, um, high in antioxidants, that y'all can um, start growing. Start growing some herbs and just let it take you from there. But you want to be researching more than anything. Yeah. What's healthy lettuce? Not the iceberg stuff, right? Right. Uh, romaine lettuce is pretty cool. Which one? Romaine. Rome, yeah, okay. okay. Romaine. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I like it. I don't have any questions. Let me see here. Like I said, I man, I do want to know. I definitely appreciate No, I appreciate y'all. But yes, before sir. we get out of here, I am serious. I don't know. I'm serious. I got lettuce and I got rabbits canning it up. How do I get this? How do I stop it? Man, so with that, one of the easiest ways is an enclosure, is an enclosed space. If you got like wild rabbits, and they're coming into your space. So in enclosed space is the easiest one. Um, we do, we plant like this, is, uh, everything else after that is gonna be a little bit less effective, but um, it's all about creating a system for yourself. But we do marigolds. A lot of rodents, they don't like marigold flowers. So planting more of those flowers and mixing those with your cabbage can help you out. Um, also, if depending on how much space you have, if you have a dog, Dogs are great at keeping yeah. a lot of pests away. Yeah. So with what, that, do you all use any pesticides to keep insects away from your crops or anything like that? Um, no, we, we just started uh, getting into like organic pesticides. But what that means is um, bacteria that's naturally found in our soil. So there's this one organic pesticide called BT, um, Bacillus thuringiensis, but it's called BT. And that's what uh, we use for our stuff. And also neem oil works as well. Okay. So, mm-hmm. um, could you all explain to the people what, what's a greenhouse? What is it used for? So a greenhouse is used like a private school in the kindergarten for your plants. 
and that's pretty much your preschool before you put them out into the hot sun you want to develop them inside the greenhouse and there you get to monitor them nurture them mm -hmm. and you get to put you get to select the best ones that you put out into the field mm. okay and um before we you want to mention that or mm. Hey, have you heard about um, some U.S. Um, retail corporation uh, just signed a patent for some uh, autonomous robot bees? Have you heard about that? Nah, but um, that's where it's at. You said autonomous robot? Yeah, autonomous robot, robot bees. bees. They just bees. signed a patent. Oh, oh, yeah. Hey, man. That's a whole, y'all starting a whole nother, uh, that's a whole nother thing, but. Um, oh, brother, we got time. No, they, they got to get out of here. We, 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 we might be no, yeah, yeah, get out. Yeah, we, we we might be saying goodbye to the to the honeybees, y'all. Like I'm just being uh, real. Um, so uh, to honeybee, yeah, to the honeybee that y'all know, it's a pandemic going on right now where they're um, but it's been a long time coming where they've been dying. It's a whole there's a whole nother conversation, but the whole point is, and it's a specific type of honeybee too, but it's the Western European honeybee that's uh that's kind of going through it right now. But the point is, is that uh. The, the automated honeybee, the automated bee that they, that the USDA would produce would pretty much fulfill the role of the honeybee, which is to pollinate our crops on a large scale. So that's what we had it at, man, unfortunately. So you think it's necessary? It's necessary for capitalism. It's, it's necessary for what they want to do. That, that's their system. You know, I'm, I don't, I won't have access to that and I won't be using robot honeybees but in order to supply the large chains with food consistently in the midst of climate whatever you need uh that's what you, you gotta do jesus that's yeah. where we have with little tiny robot honeybees that's what we are in technology but yeah that's what Gee, we had. I definitely appreciate they you all. This was great. From uh, DNA. Yeah, that was kind of that was the that was why we wanted to extend this reach out and, and do this this is a great this is a great conversation. It was enlightened. Yeah. It was knowledgeable. Yeah. We appreciate it. We appreciate y'all for having us. Right. And whenever we come out to Tallahassee, out. you know, you all got to show us around. Oh, there yeah. you go. And likewise, likewise. Sure. Well, we appreciate this and uh, we'll stay in touch. And uh, thank you. And you all have a have a good rest of your day. Appreciate exactly. it. Exactly. All right. You too. Y'all peace. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.